the National Postal Museum contains nearly six million objects. If it's come through a post office or carried the mail, it's here. Excuse me, how are you guys doing today? Good. What's your name? Jamie. Jamie, what's your name, sir? Michael. Michael, nice. Turns out this couple shares a fascination with letter writing. All right, come on this way. We'll see what we can find. <laughs> so I figured they needed to meet curator Lynn Heidelbaugh. Our children think we're just artifacts of the past because when we first met, we were living 400 miles apart, so we corresponded by letter. letters. <laughs> so how frequently did you write? Every week. Yeah, every, every week. week. For me, uh -huh. Well, since I was in Denver mm -hmm. area and she was in uh, Utah. Oh, wow, that's yeah. beautiful. Have you shared them to your family? Yes. Mm -hmm. save them? Oh, yes. that's great. Yeah, and save them. Yeah, <laughs> Lynn would say that she gets paid to read other people's mail, and lots of it. And have some objects to show you today related to World War II. This one is particularly eloquent and meaningful as a person is looking back. And he's talking about how he's stationed at Pearl Harbor. Want to try reading some of that? Ghastly though it must have looked on that infamous day in December of 41, it must have been a beautiful scene of desolation. The morning of December 7, 1941, dawned clear and sunny on the Hawaiian island of Oahu. 60,000 military personnel on base at Pearl Harbor woke up to the roar of exploding Japanese bombs. Eight Navy battleships were sunk. One of them was the USS Oklahoma. This hand stamp from the Oklahoma's post office went down with the ship. The date still reads Saturday, December 6th. This stamp has an eerie power to evoke that day, but there are still some who can actually tell the story. Frank Yannick was stationed on the USS Phoenix in Pearl Harbor. On the morning of December 7th, he was on his way to the Oklahoma for church services when bombs began to fall. When the first wave came in, into Pearl Harbor, I was below deck. So I was dressed all in whites, getting ready to go on the Oklahoma, which was sunk. If I'd have been, if I'd have waited five more minutes, and maybe seven, and I wouldn't be here now. The first wave came in, just let torpedoes and bombs and everything else and, and hit the hit the ships because they were all in a bunch. When I got up to my battle station, why I, I, I fired at anything that flew. In a single morning, the Japanese took the lives of over 2,400 service members and civilians. Frank remembers the aftermath. And would you believe coffins stacked mile high? Congress declared war on Japan the very next day. And Frank was on the front lines of history. I'm a little boy from Pennsylvania, little coal mining town. Joined the Navy when I was 18 got baptized by the Japanese at 19. How many of your uh, uh, comrades from the Phoenix are still alive that, that you know of, and how many do you stay in touch with? None? Zero. None are still alive, or none that? None are alive. You're the, last, you're the last survivor of the Phoenix. Right. Frank served for five more years in the Pacific Theater, fighting at Wake Island, Leyte Gulf, Borneo, and the Philippines, before returning home to Virginia in 1946.